Hello and welcome to this Craft Studio Visual Script tutorial specifically looking at keyboard activated animation. Okay, so we're going to use our keyboard to not only move our robo duck that we've got in front of us around this scene, but we're also going to use our keyboard input to check some variables and uh, and to initiate some animation. So when he when we're pressing forward and he's going forward, we're going to have an an, a walk animation. And when he's just standing still, and you're not pressing anything on, on the keyboard. We're going to have an idle animation. He's just going to be standing there, kind of just swaying a little bit. Here are my two animations. First of all, you can see the idle animation, where Robo Duck's just bobbing up and down, and then you can see the walk animation. Really simply done, nothing too complicated. Both of these animations run at 30 frames a second. Okay, let's have a look at our script. Um, so, some of the things you might recognize and some of the things you probably won't recognize as well. Um, so here's our on update event, and remember on update is an event that uh, is called 60 times a second. So it just loops through this 60 times a second. And it's really useful because it can kind of check whether we're pressing buttons and it can do things according to that as well. So for example, is the back button down? And if it is, then move the self game object by its orientated position, uh, offsetting it by minus two. Okay, along its along its Z. What I've done is I've started adding in some a little bit of the animation, uh, and I'll come to this uh, and explain this uh, section in just a moment. Let's first of all go over to the on awake event, which is when the game object is first called into being. Uh, so it's a really good place to create our first variables, um, and I'm going to be creating three new variables: uh, one called model renderer, one called self idle, one called self walk, and uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial about variables uh, but for now uh, what I want you to uh, just get is that variables are a great place to store information that can be used with, for the script later on. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to set the value of um, and this is our variable self dot model rend, okay just a shortened version to the component model renderer of the, self, the value of the self game object now what on earth does all this mean? Well, what it means is if we remember it, when we go into our game, our game scene, uh, there's our player over here and our player contains these components, a transform component which is always there, uh, a model renderer which contains the model of the duck and its opacity and we've attached the scripted behavior um, which we're just writing right in the present. Uh, the model renderer is the thing that also plays the animations. So what we're saying here is we're saying the this variable will contain information about what that model is doing at, at any stage throughout the game. Uh, and that's going to be useful uh, later on when we're going to ask, we're going to use the variable and we're going to say, hey variable, are you playing this type of animation? Or you play, or are you not playing this type of animation? And if you're not, then play this type of animation. So we're going to ask it questions later on by using if statements. The next two things we set the value of self idle, and we're actually calling the animation uh, asset idle type animation, and we're doing the walk animation as well. Now, one of the good reasons to create variables is to save you time later on in your scripting. So if we've used a value in the rest of our script in the on update um, and we want to change that value later on, it's going to be really picky to try and kind of go in there and dig about, find those bits and pieces and change them. But if we've used a variable, we can change all that same variable all the way through just by going in and changing in the on awake, we can change it there. And that will uh, that will topple through, uh, and ripple through the rest of our project. So we'll set the value of self uh, dot idle to the asset dot idle, and we set the value of self dot walk to asset walk. And let me just show you where all these things are and where you, you can build this stuff for yourself. So the to create variables, we go up to variable over here, and we drag in this set value of, and we say uh, self dot whatever we want to call the variable to the value of and then over here it says to the component now if we go to 
um, game object. This is where we can find the components. Uh, and they've got a little list here, so we're going to drag this in over here. And we're going to say it could be a model render, it could be a map or a camera, but it's a model. And then we say to the value of the self game object. So whatever the game object is doing, the model render of that game object is going to store information about the type of animation that it's currently running. So let's add a value of and type in self dot game big O object. Okay, and that's how we create that first one. So let's delete it. And the way we create these other ones down here is the set value of, which again it's in variables, so we set value of to uh, the, uh, the variable that we want, so self, and it could be idle, to the value of asset idle of type model animation. And there in assets over here, I'm going to go down to, oh, there it is, right at the top. Um, okay, so here we go. So it says asset full path of type model animation we're going to go down to. Now the full type thing is, the full path thing is really if uh, if we create folders we would uh, for our animation which in, and our animations are actually kept inside RoboDuck so if we were to create a kind of a folder here kind of with uh, player okay and we would put to, we would put RoboDuck in that folder which I'm not going to do we would uh, we would have to um, put a forward slash here. For us, it's in the root folder, so we don't have to put uh, a forward slash or anything like that. So it's asset idle of type model animation, uh, and that's how we create that one. We just uh, clip it into the unawake, and we do the same with the walk, and then right at the end of this unawake function. So as soon as it's finished, is we're going to actually create make this. Um, make this self model renderer, make the component actually play an animation. And the way we make the component model renderer play the animation is we set the value of the self model renderer to play the value of the self idle animation. Okay, uh, and those, this block here is found, I think, in game object, and I think there's something called model renderer. Here it is. So set the model renderer. We go to variables to create our two variables. So you type in self dot um, self dot model rend to self dot idle. And we clip that in, and all that does is it starts playing the idle animation straight away. Okay, so as soon as we uh, we see the scene and we see our 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 Robo Duck, let's play it. He's going to start the idle animation. So there we go, bobbing around. So that's great. So that's all set these things up. Now let's show you how how this all works. Now we put it together. So the first things first, when we press our forward button, we know we can make the game object move by its orientated offset forward along its z-axis by 0.2. That just moves us forward. And as long as we keep that button down held down, he's going to move continually forward because it's going to call this 60 times a second and check uh, whether that button's being pressed. Inside that if statement, so if that forward button's being pressed, we're going to add another if statement. So we're going to say if the animation played by the, this variable, which is the model renderer, does not equal the walk animation. So if it's not playing the walk animation, then play the walk animation. Okay, so set the value of the model renderer to play the walk animation. And the reason we do this is um, we could just say when the when the forward button is pressed set it to play that. Unfortunately, because it's running at 60 times a second, if we don't have this other if statement, it would con continually start to play the beginning of that animation. And the whole thing would look like it's kind of stuck, it's frozen, because it's continually playing the first frame of the animation. Because it's running so fast, we won't see the whole animation play out. We just see it sort of stuck at the beginning. It'll still move forward, but it'll be kind of be frozen.
So if we use this if condition, we just say we check whether it's being played, and if it isn't if it isn't being played, then we just start playing it. Um, of course, once it's being played. The next 60 times this checks itself, it says, uh, oh, it is being played, and I don't have to do this anymore. I hope that makes sense. Let's, let's do it slowly, and do it slowly uh, with the back button. So I want the walk animation to be played exactly the same time as it's going backwards. So let's go to Flow, and let's build this together. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, if the back button is pressed down, we're going to move forward, and then if the animation and the animation should be in here, here it is. So if the animation played by the model renderer is not. the walk animation, then you can play, so we're going to set the value to play, and let's drag this over to here, so this is in game objects, I'm going to set I'm going to duplicate this one, I'm going to set the model renderer to then play this new animation, and as long as then then if it's playing that model, then if it's playing the animation uh, when we get to this statement, it's not going to try and play it again, it's just going to keep playing it. So that animation is going to just play out while we've got this back button pressed down. Now, unfortunately, uh, if we don't have any other buttons pressed down, it's going to continue playing that animation even if we don't have any buttons pressed down. Let's show you what happens. Let's press play. Okay, now it's bobbing up and down doing its idle, which is great. Let's press forward. Oh, brilliant! I'm going forward and I'm having I'm being animated at the same time as his little legs go in. And if I press backward, he's going. His little legs are moving backwards as well. Fantastic. But if I stop, his little legs are going still. So what I need to do is I need to make a, another condition to make sure that when none of these buttons are being pressed, our duck goes back to its idle animation. So let's make sure that when the forward button is not being pressed and the back button is not being pressed, the robo duck returns to his idle animation and waits until we press the forward buttons again or the back button. So let's put an if statement in. So we go up here and we say if, and we can add in this really good one which is two Boolean statements and or or, and then we can even uh, add in a negative if it's not for example if not and if not let's duplicate the back button bring it down forward so if the forward if not the forward button and not the back button is down, let's duplicate this one here. And if the then if the animation played is not idle, then set the value of the animation to play idle. Idle. Oops, spell it right. So let's see if that works. So if we're not pressing the forward button and we're not pressing the back button, then play idle animation. Let's see if this works. And there we go. So it's now standing still. So when I press forward, he's going forwards and backwards and left. He's idling and right, he's idling. And we can kind of move around the map like that. And that's a very basic first steps to creating um, your animations, to making your animations run when you're pressing buttons on the keyboard. And I'm going to do a bigger, better explanation of variables very shortly in the next couple of weeks, I should imagine. And uh, 
and we'll be able to do all sorts of different things with it as well like we can create um, variables for gravity variables for velocity so it's actually this robot duck can speed up and we can also do health uh, create a value for health and uh, and also a value for things like ammunition as well uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and if you've enjoyed it also a like would be appreciated too. Thanks very much for listening, take care now, bye bye.